Hello everyone, welcome back. I am Fer and this is the Ciphering Phyrexian, the Predator Special. And this video, like all my videos, is brought to you by my Patreons, which right now are Otto Motiosum, Matt Zweig and Daniel H. McGillivray. All my Patreons, thank you very much. In this video, we are going to translate the card for Sheldred, but before we move on to that, I have a couple of announcements, because I've been wanting to find a way to include the community in this deciphering effort, and I think I finally found a very cool way. Well, for one, th there was the live stream, which I like doing, but if I'm honest, I, I, I had a lot of problems with the audio and the video, so I'm gonna keep making live streams and I'm gonna make them better, but right now, we have the Phyrexian Dictionary. Uh, this is a, a, a file that anyone can edit. And so the idea is that if you want to help us deciphering Phyrexian, you can come here and add entries of, of other words you have noticed so that you, you know that we know the meaning, but that we have not uh, compiled here. And this is something I've been thinking about because we cannot just rely on our memories. We need a way to know, to, to check all the words we know, what we know about them, other instances of those words, uh, and that will and that will help us uh, decipher all the words we don't know. Now, I have to admit that this is not the first attempt to create a Phyrexian dictionary. There's, for example, this one that was created by the community a couple of years ago, and, and it is a good dictionary, but I think that the main problem with this is the formatting. They wanted to find a way to type in Phyre uh, Phyrexian in the computer, and so they created this key of equivalences between symbols you can type in the computer and Phyrexian symbols. And while I get the, the, the purpose behind this, I think that right now we have much better tools. For example, we can add images in the cells of the spreadsheets, uh, and that way we can look at the Phyrexian symbols as they are. And we can very easily put here, well, what we think that the meaning is, uh, the suspected pronunciation using the International Phonetic Alphabet, uh, in, in the ones we suspect uh, the consonantal root, we can include it and we can even add some other instances of those words. For example, here I have a column for instances. Oh, yeah, yeah like to explaining in which cards we see these words and also uh, other versions of this word because sometimes we have seen them for example, the, car, the, the word for creature, we have seen it in many different variations but if we catalog them and we can look at all the different instances of the word creature and we can look what they are, what they have in common and, and their differences, well, we can learn a lot more about the grammar of this language. So the link is in the description. And okay, I know that whenever this happens, people worry about vandalism because if this is public, anyone will be able to come here and delete things or, or change things and make a mess. But don't worry, I have a copy of this file uh, uh, that only I can edit. And so the, the idea is that I will look at this ver at the public version periodically and copy everything that is okay so that uh, everything that we do gets preserved and if there's a case of vandalism, I will be able to restore this file. And if you want, you can get a copy of your edits into your own Google Docs so that if there's vandalism and I wasn't able to save your, your entries, uh, you can, I don't know, message me or something and say like, hey, I, I did an entry, but it was vandalized uh, and I'm going to upload it again and I can then put your entry on the master file or something. And so, yeah, this is uh, uh, very exciting. I, I hope uh, you like it. And if you have suggestions on how to better format this dictionary, uh, um, I'm open to it. Uh, I've never made a dictionary. Uh, but I know it is. Uh, <laughs> I, I know there are people that do dictionaries like for a living and stuff, and I know there are rules and methodologies. So if you know about that, please tell. Uh, but anyway, right now let's move to Sheldreth. And first, let's read the version in English Sheldreth, the Whispering One. Legendary creature, predator, swamp walk. Now, uh, this here is the reminder text. Uh, a text that explains you the rules of an ability in the game if you don't uh, if you don't know it by memory. Uh, it would be very cool if we had reminder text in Phyrexian, but apparently it seems that we don't. So I'm going to be ignoring this text here. 
Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature. Okay, actually, I don't know, uh, I feel like Sheldred is not as oppressing as Jingitaxias or or Boring Clicks, uh, but, but I don't know, I've never played against it. Anyway, uh, here we have the text. Oh, um, remember that uh, what I do is that I cut the text and I arrange it in the way it would be in universe. And so let's see, first let's start with a name. And... Okay, for the, the, the first thing we have is just Sheldred, and there's uh, not much uh, to, to know there, just uh, the name. But here is very interesting because we have the Whispering One. And actually, these symbols here, we have uh, already seen them in, in, in other instances, and they appear to turn uh, verbs into nouns or something along those lines. And so that means that these would have to be Whisper. And that, that's actually a word we have seen before in the flavor text of Elishnorn. They mention uh, that the Gitaxians whisper among themselves, uh, and we see this verb. Uh, it's odd that we have a, a plural marker here. Whisper is plural here for some reason. It's not very clear why, but perhaps it's just to specify that it's not someone who is just whispering one time, but maybe that is making a lot of whispers or that whispers in general. Um, I don't know, there, there's something interesting here with the plurals and, and this particle, but we'll have to think more about that some other time. Uh, legendary creature, uh, Predator, and then we have finally uh, the rules text. The first column says, well, we know it says Swamp Walk in English, and we recognize first the symbols for the, the ability markers. I don't know what happened there. That wasn't a very good oval. Okay, so that's the ability marker that we have seen many times. And also, uh, in Jumpstart, they released these uh, swamps written in Phyrexian. And so we can know very easily that this is a swamp com by comparing it with that card. And so this would have to be walk. Okay, so let me write it all. Ability, swamp, walk. Now let's look at the second column. Uh, we have here a tense marker, which probably means something like at start or something. Again, remember that I'm going to make a, a separate video just analyzing all of these tense markers. And if you want to classify all the tense markers in the dictionary, I haven't done that, so go ahead. Well, I think I classified a few, but there are many more that I have not classified. Uh, upkeep, ah, oh yeah, then uh, for this word, we recognize the word for step, like the steps in the, in the parts of the game. This is uh, something that we have seen in previous cards. So I'm, I'm translating this as step, but it could be section or phase or something like that. And then this would have to be something like upkeep. Well, the, it, it, in, in the rules of the game, it is called the upkeep step, but upkeep, some, it's a, like... At this point in the video, first started rumbling about the word upkeep in English and how words like up and out are not used just for their physical meanings but also for more abstract ideas. This rumbling was very incoherent and didn't contribute much, so we have decided to remove it. The point is that I don't expect the word up to be anywhere in here, nor the word keep for that matter, or any other equivalences. And then we have this thing. Uh, which I suspect should be something like each beginning. This is something that we have seen before, how the plurals are related to the word each in Phyrexian. Or rather, I could say that these are plural markers, but they do a lot more than just being plural markers. Uh, and we actually, we, we saw that uh, a little bit when discussing the, the part of the whispers. So this would be each beginning or a, each begin or something like that. And then we have uh, this thing here that I suspect is like an imperative marker, like for uh, to make orders. And then we have a very long word, but fear not, because uh, this is something that, that I learned when uh, learning German. Whenever you see a very long word, just try to break it up into the little words you know. So for example, here we see the word song. Okay, then we see the word for graveyard, which we have seen before. 
And then, based on other things we have seen before, maybe this would be from. Maybe I am not sure. I can, I, I, yeah, well, from. You know, you know what it says. And then we have this ending here, which I don't know what it is. I, I have honestly no clue, no idea what this is or this is doing here. Uh, but anyway, let's continue. Uh, and this actually, it's interesting because this is uh, another uh, compound word. First, from the word for creature, that actually you can see in the part for legendary creature uh, over here. You can see it, it is exactly the same. So this is creature, and this is something we have seen before. This is card. So it's just creature card. And then in, in the next column, we have... Uh, this is a word that we don't know what it is. We have never seen something like it, as far as I know. That's why that's this is why we need a dictionary. Uh, maybe we have seen this word before, but I don't remember it because I cannot remember everything. And then we have this construction here. It seems to have the imperative marker and the thing I had originally recognized as the yours particle. But okay, many people have been telling me in the comments that this probably doesn't mean yours. And yeah, by this point, I'm pretty much convinced that this not only means yours. I think it could mean yours and some other things. It wouldn't be that crazy. Uh, but yeah, this pretty much uh, guarantees that it has some other meanings that I had not considered. But right now, I'm just gonna think that this is just some weird kind of imperative, some kind of weird order. Uh, then let's see what else. Uh, uh, this is a, another very long word that uh, it, it is made of things we have seen before. Again, we, we see sewn. It's very easy to recognize because it's just a circle and it has these two consonants on the sides. And then we have, actually from the card from Urabrask, we recognize uh, the, the word for battle or fight or something like that. Uh, we know from the card for Boring Clex that this means on. So we have own battle zone. And then we have this thing here, which is the same from uh, the, the previous word about the graveyard. And so it's interesting that both of these words have it. Yeah, the, the, the meaning must be connected, but at this point, I am not sure exactly how. This is another reason why we need the, the dictionary so that we can compare different instances of a graveyard zone and battle zone, and we can maybe see if they appear with this or not, and, in, and how the context was different, and then perhaps learn something, I don't know. Uh, but now, now let's analyze uh, the, the following. Well, this is the end of the sentence, so let's analyze this sentence. Uh, so, at start of the start step, each beginning an order from a graveyard zone creature card on battlefield zone. Okay, the, the very interesting part is that this is a verb. Because, okay, we know that in Phyrexian, verbs are pretty much always at the end of sentences. But this would seem to be not a verb, but a noun. However, and this is something crazy, perhaps the fact that it is being used at the end of the sentence is turning it into a verb. Do you know how you can say something like water? Water is a noun in English. But if I say water the plants, I did not change the word water at all. But the fact that I used it as a noun, uh, sorry, as a verb, turned it into a verb. And so perhaps something similar is happening here and the fact of using battlefield zone as a verb implies that something goes into the battlefield zone also the fact that you have here this perhaps imperative marker that would almost guarantee that what follows it is a verb so that's interesting so what is the only thing we are missing here uh, to be able to know what this word is so it says that at the beginning of your upkeep uh, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Okay, so if you look at what we have, we have pretty much all the elements here, except for the word target. And oh, come to think of it, return. So this, so this word here should be return or target. 
But like based on the grammar we know, it wouldn't make much sense for this to be a verb because as, as, as I explained before, uh, we have very good reasons to believe that verbs always go at the end. So I think this is target. But maybe it could be return, and there's more about the, the word order in Phyrexian that we don't un really understand just yet. But uh, right now, I'm, I'm confident about this translation. But now, now let's analyze the second sentence. And we have this uh, same tense marker that I think is uh, like at start. And then we have opponent. We have seen this word many, many times before. And then we have uh, uh, the same the same thing we saw before about like the upkeep step. And uh, we have that this is the the word for step and this is upkeep, although it's probably something completely different from the English upkeep, hopefully. Then we have each beginning, again with a plural, and then it's interesting that here we see uh, a gap in the line that we didn't see in the previous one, but maybe that was because the, the each beginning was at just at the end of that line. So maybe should we consider this a gap in the line? It would be like if in English you could either put a comma or just a line break would act as a comma but then how do you know when a line break is not supposed to act like a comma? There might be some ambiguity there and that might be relevant because uh, gaps in the line indicate sometimes that a, a new uh, subordinate sentence is starting and, as we have sus and, and we suspect that subordinate sentences can use a different word order than uh, the normal sentences. So knowing when when a line break is just a line break or when it is a punctuation mark can be crucial to deciphering the direction. But anyway, that's, that's, uh, some, that's a topic for another video because uh, right now we just see that this is an imperative marker. Okay, nice. And then we see uh, the word for creature. Uh, which is a little bit different from what, what he, we've seen before in this very card. So let me show you that um, if you... Sorry, it keeps moving. Stop. There. So we know that this is creature and this is creature. But as you can see, here we have two vowels and here we only have one. Why? Maybe... How is it different? Okay, we know that here creature is like part of a compound noun, creature card, which creates a single word. And here creature is by itself, not forming part of anything else. And so that for some reason makes it have different vowels. But like how? What's, what's the rule here? And this is another reason why we need a dictionary. So go to the dictionary and, and catalog all the instances of the word creature we've seen so that we can know what's going up, what's going on with these, with the different vowels here. Because if we can figure that out, it would be very useful to, to recognize many, many words that we have not uh, recognized before were just other instances of words we know or something like that, just like with vowels in places we didn't expect or something like that. Uh, and then finally we have uh, this thing here, which I think should be the the, the verb, and it should be some it should be sacrifice, because each opponent has to sacrifice. So we get that at start oh, at start opponent start step each beginning order creature sacrifice. It seems uh, pretty I don't know I'm pretty confident about this translation. And so that's it. Those are all the new Preters uh, we have seen. This is the end of the Preter special uh, in future videos. I don't know what, which one I'm going to do first, if either analyzing the, 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 the tense, all the tense markers we have seen before or analyzing, I don't know, there, there were many questions we had left. Uh, but, or perhaps I'm going to make a video just talking about the dictionary. And, and remember, anyone can, can edit it. The link is in the description. Oh, but there's one thing. If you're going to make images of Phyrexian words, 
I just try to make them simple and legible. Like it doesn't matter if the lines are very straight or if the stars are very nice. It just the most important part is that we can all recognize what symbols we are talking about. And if you think that my symbols here are not very good and you want to make something a lot more professional, go ahead. Uh, again, just legibility is the only thing that matters here. Also, if you make uh, some kind of big edit, please copy this file into your uh, Google into your Google account so that if there is some kind uh, case of vandalism, uh, your edits are not lost and, and we can recover them. And uh, yeah, uh, have a lot of fun and remember that reading is important, but re reading is important not because it's reading, but because stories are like food for your souls. So watching a very good TV show or a very good video game can be as enriching as reading a good book. So either go read a good book or go watch a good movie or go watch a good video game. Just enrich your souls.